Hey everybody, it's Crypto Anarchist here, and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies today. And uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how uh, the SegWit version of Lightning. So this is the SegWit implemented on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Vertcoin, Grosselcoin. I don't know exactly what all coins are SegWit activated. There's a lot of them, but the uh, the SegWit version of Lightning can cause bank runs, and actually all the market incentives are there. Like it pushes its cryptocurrency user base into creating a bank run. Um, this is a terrible thing. It's an absolutely insane thing, and it absolutely terrifies me for any proof-of-work cryptocurrency that is going to Bitcoin SegWit's version of Lightning. Now, I'll cover this at the end. You can kind of make a short run around that could make this workable for proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies. That's why I keep on saying this. The Lightning Network is best for proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies, but it's not really very good for proof-of-work cryptocurrencies, especially full-block proof of work cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin SegWit like that's the worst that's absolutely the worst cryptocurrency that you could put SegWit's version of Lightning on so the first thing you got to understand about Lightning is that uh, if you implement Bitcoin Lightning the fees on the blockchain are going to rise exponentially so the fees right now they've been around five to ten bucks I don't know exactly what they are um, if you're doing actual transactions on the blockchain, if you're not using a light wallet, you know, if you're not using Coinbase, if you're actually using Bitcoin, the blockchain itself, they've been five to ten bucks. And so on the main chain, fees are gonna rise. This guy uh, talking about Bitcoin Lightning here says yes, on the Bitcoin main chain, fees on the Bitcoin main chain will rise to hundred dollars eventually. Okay, so you might not think much of this if you say, well, we're going to be doing all our transactions off the blockchain, right? So if you're doing off all your transactions off the blockchain, what do you care what the fees on the blockchain are? Well, what you care about is the fact that Bitcoin SegWit can cause uh, lightning bank runs. And the only people who are at risk for these bank runs are those people who keep their funds uh, in the Lightning Network. So if you keep your funds on the main blockchain, this cannot happen to you. It's literally impossible to happen. But if you keep your funds on the Lightning Network, it is possible to have all your stuns stolen or all, all your funds stolen, and there's nothing you can do about it. So let's let's talk about how this happens. Obviously, we just talked about if implemented, you know, Lightning causes $100 plus fees. It can get a lot higher than that. I'm pretty sure Gregory Maxwell, the guy behind Blockstream, the Satan of Bitcoin. Uh, I'm pretty sure that he said he thinks fees will get to be $1,000 per block. And Gregory Maxwell, for all of you who don't know, he's the one keeping the block size small. He's the one who won't raise it. And it's because he runs Blockstream. And so the smaller the block sizes are, the more people need side chains. Blockstream makes its money from making side chains. So like this is ridiculous uh, what has gone on with Bitcoin SegWit. It's been hijacked by one person and his company to make money for himself and his company and fuck everybody else on the network. But anyways, to avoid fees uh, on Bitcoin SegWit, once they implement Lightning, you got to do all your transactions off the blockchain. You're not going to pay $100 per fee. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Nobody's going to do it. Absolutely nobody's going to do it. So the only people who are going to run nodes are going to be people who run lightning nodes as well. And everybody's going to try and run their own lightning node. The issue is, though, is that in order to run a lightning node, first you have to open a channel. So in order to open a channel, you'll have to pay a $100 fee to open a channel. So then that means you have to do thousands to tens of thousands of transactions just to make your money back to you know, be able to pay the fee. So that's kind of a big issue, uh, and you know you got to close it eventually too. But anyways, um, to avoid the fee, or they avoid the fees by doing all the transactions off the blockchain. And so this is the issue: is that all your incentives are not to use the Bitcoin blockchain. It's to lock your funds up on the Lightning Network so that you don't pay a hundred dollar fees. Because if you look at this, like n nobody who uses Bitcoin SegWit sa is going to say, "Oh, if I want to trade, I'm going to do it on the blockchain." No, you'd, you'd be an idiot. So everyone's going to do their trades off the blockchain. So you don't like this doesn't seem bad when you first think about it. But there's a problem with Bitcoin SegWit's version of Lightning uh, that I call the nightmare scenario. And again, all the incentives, all the market incentives are pushing for this nightmare scenario to happen. So it's just like in uh, fractional reserve banking systems. In a fractional reserve banking system, even if you know that it's going to cause bank runs because uh, by changing the 
uh, supply of loanable funds, you create a, an artificial surplus. So by creating an artificial surplus in the short term, you get overspending and overinvestment. And then the long term, you get malinvestment and people who have no money. So the nightmare scenario for a fractionally reserved blockchain, the way Bitcoin Segwit does it. And again, Bitcoin Segwit is a fractionally reserved blockchain because you will do thousands of transactions off the blockchain for every transaction on the blockchain. And I want to re remind you guys that this is not streaming money transactions. This is like if I pay a guy named Mark, and then I pay a guy named Tom, and then I pay a guy named Bob, and it's only one transaction on the blockchain. So I paid three guys, it's one transaction on the blockchain. That's what makes Bitcoin Segwit a fractionally reserved blockchain. And just, just like in the scenario with uh, fractionally reserved banks, with a fractionally reserved blockchain, the problem is, is that in the beginning, you get a lot of overinvestment and overspending because people think, oh, now I'm not paying fees, you know, it's all good, everything's beautiful, it's all great. And so you get as many people moving to the Lightning Network as possible and as many people doing transactions on the Lightning Network as possible. But the issue is, is that on the Bitcoin SegWit blocks, you can only have 4,000 transactions per block. So it's like 400 transactions per minute. That's all that can clear on the Bitcoin blockchain. So if they do not raise the block size, if they do not raise the block size, and they'd have to raise it massively because they have to raise it to be high enough that this nightmare scenario happens or never happens. But if they don't raise the block size, if you've got like, let's say a million transactions being done per Bitcoin block, but it just comes back, you know, to each block as 4,000 transactions. Well, what happens if you get extra people trying to close out their uh, channels on Lightning? And there's two ways this can happen. This just can just happen randomly. Like, let's say there's a loss of confidence in Bitcoin and people want out. And so they're clearing their transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain. So if something like if a depression happens, you know, you'll have a You'll have a huge number of transactions go to the block, but when when these Bitcoin transactions try to clear after leaving the Lightning uh, network, these millions of transactions per block, there's only 4,000 that can fit in a block. So only 4,000 of those million will fit in that block. And I'm not saying the full million will try and come out at once, but it doesn't matter. Like as long as there's more transactions coming out than the block can handle, this scenario will happen. But if you don't have enough transaction throughput to root all your lightning transactions out of that network then what will happen to the people who cannot clear their lightning transactions is that money literally gets lost okay it literally gets lost it's gone forever well it's not necessarily gone forever but whatever the original contract whatever the original um transaction was that's what the transaction is going to be so let's say i have a lightning net or transaction that you know i fund it with one whole bitcoin and then i start doing payments with it and i've only spent two hundred dollars of it but then this nightmare scenario happens and I can't clear my transaction that one whole Bitcoin is gone it's gone I didn't spend it it still should be mine but it's gone because I can't clear it over the uh, the actual blockchain and so again this is just the issue that you have with any sort of fractional reserve system is you make people think like it can do more than it can and then once they try and pull their money out they're fucked like this is literally a bank run just like in fractional reserve bank systems okay transactions on lightning that do not clear are lost and so basically what you'll have have happen is if you already have a hundred dollar transaction fees on lightning people will try and clear their transactions they won't be able to because there's not enough space on the blockchain and so then what happens after that is that people will just keep pushing these fees higher and higher so if fees were already a hundred dollars fees are now a thousand dollars if fees were a thousand dollars they're now ten thousand dollars and people will pay the equivalent amount in fees uh, that they that their Bitcoin transaction was that the amount of Bitcoin that they were about to lose so the fees might even be tens to twenty to you know fifty thousand dollars in this nightmare scenario so you'll be stuck with oh or do you want to pay a ten thousand dollar fee to the network or do you want to lose all your Bitcoin like that's retarded it makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense and the real weird thing about this is that under this scenario like the the, the lightning nodes get paid for the transactions they root but if this issue happens uh, you're the one who loses out, not the Lightning Node. The Lightning Node doesn't lose shit. I mean, obviously, if you're running your own Lightning Node, you lose out. But what happens if some massive super node uh, just clears all his, or tries to clear all his transactions on the blockchain? He's just made it so nobody else can clear their transactions, and he doesn't actually face any consequences. So the problem with this thing is it's like, like with Bitcoin Segwit, it's basically hot potato. It's good to run a Lightning Node in the beginning and make fees off it, uh, but then if you can, you know, clear the network and get out of there before the whole thing tumbles, you're good to go while everybody else will be screwed. And the final thing I want to talk about is the super node problem. 
So with Lightning, uh, you're going to run into issues of supernodes, and the reason why you're going to run into issues of supernodes is the Lightning network works best with supernodes. Uh, people who have more connections, like you're going to be able to route more transactions, you're going to be able to route them more directly for lower fees, so it's just easier and better. Um, and so supernodes with Lightning, it's much better. The, the problem is, is that for Bitcoin SegWit, it's a proof of work cryptocurrency, so it's not proof of stake. So you can't implement super nodes into your block reward. Um, so they're screwed by that. Um, the other thing is, is that with super nodes, if you try and clear out all your transactions on the blockchain again, uh, that massively increases the risk of runs. So if you've got one super node who has like five percent of network traffic, or like you would, you would imagine there'd be a lot of super nodes that have more traffic than the blocks can hand like per block can handle um, and so that's what you got to watch out for but again the super nodes it makes lightning more efficient it makes it better and that's why segwit lightning should be a proof of stake thing um, the way proof of stake would do it too uh, and this would also solve the solve the problem that like if the lightning node screws everybody over uh, they don't lose out the way proof of stake could solve this problem is they would say that if you use the lightning network um, your funds are not at risk it's actually the person who owns the master node because like let's say in pivx or like dash you have to own a thousand of the coin to run a master node you would say that if something goes wrong you will be paid out from this master nodes coins and so you just say like if something goes wrong you just wait it out you'll get paid from this master nodes coins if your coins get lost and so that's how proof of stake can work for or that's how um, lightning uh, the segwit version of lightning can work for proof of stake but that's why it cannot work for proof of work because for for both situations you have the possibility of a bank run but the bitcoin segwit like if you have a bank run you lose all your money it's only proof of stake who can create systems where you don't lose your money if there's a bank run and proof of stake can avoid the bank run issue by basically having super nodes root everything and so like it it just makes it a lot more organized and a lot better. I'll make a video on how proof of stake can do Segwit Lightning, but the thing you have to understand with proof of work cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is that all the incentives are created to take all your transactions off the blockchain and have as high of a ratio as possible to transactions off the blockchain to transactions on the blockchain. And the higher the ratio of transactions off the blockchain to transactions on the blockchain, the higher your risk for overloading the network and having a blockchain run a bank run as as it works for Bitcoin okay so again this is a huge issue you can lose all your money through Bitcoin SegWit's implementation of the lightning network this terrifies me I don't know why people are not talking about this um, you know if your funds get locked out of clearing on the blockchain because fees are too high or because there's just too many unconfirmed transactions you lose all your money in that Bitcoin channel that's a fact and that terrifies me um, anyways I hope you enjoyed this video uh, there will be more coming out soon.